Hello, thanks for joining us for today's message from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Today, we are focusing on the fruit of the Spirit, faithfulness. As always, if you'd like to follow along with our life notes, you can download them from calvaryaz.com forward slash life notes. Now, here is Pastor Chad Garrison. I invite you to take a seat and grab your Bible, your Bible app, and turn to the book of Galatians Chapter 5, Galatians is a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Galatia. That's why it's Galatians. And, uh, and if you don't have a Bible or a Bible app on your device, that's perfectly fine. Uh, if you're at any of our campuses at Sweetwater or at Parker, then you can find a Bible in the seats around you. Grab one of those, turn to page 1,158. That's 1158. You'll be able to follow along with us. And as always... If you don't have a Bible and you want one and you're at one of our campuses, feel free to take one. It is our gift to you. We want you to have God's Word, read God's Word. If you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible and you want one, message the service host that you're talking to right now. They can get you one or email us at calvaryaz.com. We will get you a Bible because we know if anyone reads and applies God's Word, God will change their life. So um, today we're continuing our deep dive into the fruit of the Holy Spirit and we've been talking about this for like seven weeks. Are you guys uh, familiar with them now? Do you, do you know the, Holy, the, the fruit of the Spirit now? You guys, you guys have them down? How, okay, I'm not going to ask you to just like do it publicly, but how many of you say, hey, I've, I've memorized these now? Oh, excellent, excellent. All right, so the Apostle Paul writes, Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So he, he's telling us, and just as a reminder, that this is the character of Jesus that the Holy Spirit is teaching to everyone who is a follower of Jesus. So if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, you believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins and was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then the Holy Spirit is in you, and he wants to teach you these characteristics. And, and that means that these are expected characteristics of our lives. Okay, if you're a follower of Jesus, these are, what, these are the characteristics God expects us to live out. After all, we cannot represent Jesus unless we reflect his character. And, and so, whether you, by the way, whether you follow Jesus or not, and I'm assuming that in the crowd this size and those joining us online, not everyone is a Jesus follower yet, um, that these are still desirable qualities in our lives, right? I mean, doesn't everyone want love, joy, and peace to be in their lives? I mean, does anyone aspire to be unkind, impatient, and joyless? Anyone? Okay. Some of you manage it, but you don't aspire to it, right? See, um, we want what God offers us. You know, he's offering us the fruit of the Holy Spirit. He's like, hey, I put my Holy Spirit in you. I'm going to teach you the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We want what God offers us. The problem is we just don't want it God's way. See, we want it our way. We want God to bless us with his characteristics on our terms. And that's a problem because you can't get them your way. I can't get them my way. The way that we, we receive these characteristics is surrendering to the Holy Spirit, embracing his teachings, and obeying his leading. That, that's how this happens. And so today we're talking about faithfulness. I'm fairly certain everyone that's listening wants to be faithful. Is anybody aspiring to be faithless? No, I, I didn't think so. If you are, keep it to yourself. It'll show. Um, but see, one result of surrendering to Jesus is that faithfulness is going to grow in our lives because God is faithful. God is faithful. Um, now, we should know this because we sing about it. it. You know, there's no one else who's worthy and, and we celebrate it. it. It's why we trust God because God is faithful. He's faithful to us. He's faithful to all of his people. And the scriptures proclaim God's faithfulness relentlessly. And I, and I say that, I'm just going to share a couple. Uh, Lamentations, chapter three, the prophet Jeremiah, in the midst of his lament over the destruction of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple uh, in 587 BC, he writes, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every single morning. Great is your faithfulness. There's a lot of songs written out of those verses. 
But see, he's declaring the faithfulness of God. He just says, it, it just goes on. It never comes to an end. And the Apostle Paul writing to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, actually says, this saying is trustworthy. For if we have died with him, with Christ, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. Jesus told us that. But if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. You know what that means? One of, the, one of the implications of that is that if you're a follower of Jesus, we've already defined what that is, then the Holy Spirit is in you. And even if you're faithless, and, and the Holy Spirit, is in, he'll convict you, so your faithlessness won't be any fun. But, uh, but even if you're faithless, God still will honor the fact that you're his, and he's still gonna save you. He's still gonna take you to heaven when you die. That, that's amazing truth. He can't deny himself because he will always be faithful. So we trust God because he is faithful. But what does that mean? Now, I, I can't cover all the aspects of God's faithfulness, but what I wanna do today is just share three statements that hit the heart of God's faithfulness, okay? First one is, God is faithful because God's word is true. God's word is true. I mean, you can believe the Bible. I mean, I mean, that's why we teach out of this book. That's why we give them away. That's why we encourage you to read them. You can believe the Bible. And if you don't, then um, it's, it's probably hard to figure out, you know, how to follow Jesus. Because Jesus' words are in here. Okay, in fact, Jesus said, you know, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So those are words of Jesus we find from Scripture. In fact, everything we know about Jesus is from Scripture. So if you want to follow Jesus, but you don't want to believe the Bible, it's going to be difficult because then you're just kind of making up your own Jesus. So here at Calvary, our first essential belief is this. We believe the Bible is the inerrant, inspired word of God that tells us what to believe and how to live. So that's why we teach Scripture. Uh, and our first uh, core value is relatable truth. I think you've heard it before. If you read and apply God's word, <laughs> what's God gonna do? Yeah, he's gonna change your life. We actually believe that. We want you to read the Bible. We want you to learn God's word. And by the way, we want you to apply God's word to your life because the result is life change. We see it. By the way, that's my story. I don't know what your story is, but my story is, is one where, uh, you know, at 17, I said, okay, God, I'm going to go into ministry. And, and then I started devouring scripture. I started memorizing scripture. I started applying scripture and God changed my life. And that's the single most significant thing I've ever done. Yes, seminary was great and, and learning and all those things and reading and all this stuff. But the number one influence in my life has simply been the word of God. And, and, and the more I follow God's word, the better life is. And the more that I discover that God's wisdom it is better than my wisdom, and God's plans are better than my plans. You see, I trust God's word. You can trust God's word because God is faithful. His word is true. I think God is faithful because God's character is consistent. God's character is consistent. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, we love consistency, don't we? Do you, guys, do you guys like consistency in your life? Let me prove that you do. How many of you, you, when you go to the restaurants that you normally go to, you order the same thing that you normally get? Okay, yeah, rut eaters, right? We're rut eaters. I mean, you, you can ask me, you just tell me where we're going, I'll tell you what I'm eating, okay? Now, that, you know, because God has a sense of humor, my wife is the opposite. We can go to a restaurant a thousand times and she still wants to look at the menu and try to decide what she wants. And, uh, and so that you can, I think the menu has some kind of feel to it, uh, you know, or the, the words that you've read a hundred times. So, you know, most of the people, if I order something that I don't normally get, the, the waiters or waitresses are shocked. They're like, are you feeling okay? Yeah, because I'm that kind of ready to, consistency, we love consistency. But see, God is consistent. His character is unchanging. God always loves. God is always righteous. God is always holy and he's always good. And, and you know, God's character doesn't change. And, and, and that's why we can't adapt truth to fit our cultural values uh, of this world. It, God's truth doesn't change. We can't change our standards. 
you know, about our identity or sexuality or, or you know, it's something just because we want to. It, it doesn't work that way. We have to represent God's values reflected in his character no matter what the world says about what we believe. And you guys do realize that the world's going to get more and more hostile to what we believe and, and when it comes to, to biblical values. They don't share them and they're not in vogue today. And, and, and that's just reality. And we can, we can kind of go, well, can't we change this or adapt that? No, because they're based on God's character, not on our desires. So God's character is unchanging. And, and we trust God because his word is true. We trust God because his character is consistent. And God's faithfulness means that God is working for redemption. God is working for redemption. You see, God provides salvation. He provides forgiveness of sins. He adopts us as his children through Jesus' death and resurrection. He redeemed us from hell, okay? That has been done. If you're a follower of Jesus, all of that is complete. You are completely forgiven of your sins, past, present, and future. I know, that's shocking, isn't it? And, and you're guaranteed heaven. God has redeemed you from hell. You're, you are completely justified. Now, God is still working in your life. He is still redeeming your life, but there's part of this that's already been accomplished, so God has done that, but God is continuing to work in our lives to redeem us from our brokenness, from our loss, from our failure. And today he is actually working to lead you into healing and hope in life. That's what redemption means. Now there's a beautiful verse that the Apostle Paul wrote, verses in Romans chapter eight. He says, and we know that for those who love God, okay, so if you love God, this applies to you. For those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Now, a couple of things. First of all, Paul's not saying that everything that happens in your life is good because it's not, and we know that, right? We've got brokenness, we've got tragedies, we've got sickness, we've got pain, we've got loss that we have to deal with. And, and all of that is real, and so God is in the midst of that working to redeem us and our situation. And he's gonna cause all things to work together for good, but not good the way that we want it. Let me just say that. All of us have our version of good and that's not what God is committed to. God is committed to his version of good and he tells us what that is. He says, I'm gonna conform you to the image of Jesus. God is gonna redeem our brokenness. He's gonna redeem our pain. He's gonna redeem our loss. He's gonna redeem our grief. And he's gonna help use that, take it to make us more like Jesus because that's what his goal is in our lives. I mean, if you're following Jesus, the Holy Spirit wants to teach you the character of Jesus. God wants to form you in the image of his son, Jesus, so that we can represent Jesus in this world and so that we can get ready for heaven because guess what happens in heaven? We become a lot more like Jesus. Okay, we get rid of the broken bodies, we get rid of the tainted minds, we get rid of the, the, the urge to sin. All those things are done. So God is faithful. We can trust him completely. So do you trust God? Yes. Okay, a lot of you do, that's cool. Um, because following Jesus is learning to trust him more every single day. And you can trust him because he's faithful. But sometimes when we're trusting God, you know, it's like God is asking us to step off a curb. And sometimes it feels like God is asking us to leap off of a cliff. You ever been there? I mean, like on a cliff. How many cliff jumpers are in the room? How many chickens are in the room? Oh, a lot more chickens than, than cliff jumpers. Wow, okay. Hey, we need to go out sometime. That's what we need to do. So, uh, look, everybody has their fear and everybody has their stuff. And yes, I'm a little bit of a thrill seeker. I've cliff jumped. Uh, and I've bungee jumped, and, and I've done that kind of stuff. Heights don't bother me. But, um, but here's the thing. All of us are taken aback when God asks us to do things that we're not comfortable with. Now, most of those are written down in the Bible. And if you read the Bible, God's gonna confront you, and he's gonna ask you to do things that you're not comfortable with. I'm just telling you that right now. This is the place where trust becomes real. Right? This is the place where, it, it, like, am I really going to trust God with my life? Um, <laughs> there was a guy who years ago, like, you know, 100 years ago, decided he was a tightrope walker, and he decided he was going to walk across Niagara Falls. Maybe you've heard of him. And, uh, and you know, this, is, this story is old, and so I heard it when I was young in church. 
And, and he, he literally, this is physically, he did this. He did it multiple times. He, he strung a, a tightrope you know, wire across Niagara Falls and he walked across Niagara Falls. And people were there on both sides and they were cheering and shouting, yeah, that's great. And, and then you know, he, he took a wheelbarrow and, and he pushed the wheelbarrow across Niagara Falls. People were like, oh, that's awesome. And he got his assistant in the wheelbarrow. And he pushed his assistant across the falls. They must have paid him really well, right? Yeah. Pushed him across the falls. And they, people are cheering and they're going crazy. And, and he gets to that, you know, that side, the New York side. And he goes, okay, how many of you think I could, I could push you in the wheelbarrow? And everybody's like, yeah. And he goes, okay, volunteers. <laughs> Nobody volunteered. <laughs> I, and I'm just telling you right now that you know, Jesus is asking us to volunteer. That's what trust feels like sometimes. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's no big deal. Sometimes it's like, I can do that. I, okay, God, I can do that. But there's gonna come a point where it's really difficult for us. It's really difficult for you. And that's why you need to know that God is faithful. And that's why you need to know he's not gonna let you down and he's not gonna drop you and, he's not, and, and you're not gonna perish because of what he's asking you to do. And so I don't know what it is that God wants you to trust him in uh, today, but I know he wants you to trust him. Now, the question is, are you leaning toward Jesus or are you leaning away from him? When, when he's asking you to trust him, which way are you leaning? Are you saying, yes, I wanna, I wanna do this, I'm scared to death, but I, come on, Jesus, let's do this together, or are you backing up? Because we're doing one of those two when it gets hard. And some of you, some of you haven't crossed the line yet of trusting Jesus to even save you. And so you're listening to me and you're like, I don't know if I can do that, but I'm just gonna tell you right now, uh, today I want you to begin that journey following a faithful savior who gave his life to, to pay for your sins and to rescue you from hell. And, and to begin that relationship means that you have to surrender to Jesus. You have to confess him as Lord, the Apostle Paul said, if we can believe in our heart that God, confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we'll be saved. So that's the two parts. You gotta believe that he really is the son of God and savior of the world. And you gotta commit your life to following him. You gotta say, Jesus, you're my boss, you're my king. I submit to you. Now, if you want to do that and you don't know how, see us after the service. We'd love to have that conversation. Pastors are out in the foyer. Prayer team is here at the front. At least fill out a connect card so that we can have that conversation this week. We would love to follow up with you about how you can let Jesus change your life too. You've already heard a song about that. He will do that. He is a faithful savior who will save your soul and change your life. So God is faithful. We wanna be faithful. We've already said that. So let's discuss what does a faithful like life look like? Okay, it's easy to talk about faithfulness and go, wow, God is faithful and we wanna be faithful. But what does that actually look like? Because um, I think most of us know it when we see it but you gotta qualify it. What does a faithful life actually look like? Um, I got three indicators I wanna share with you. Now, this is really important because this is a self-test, which means as we listen to the, the indicators, I want you to evaluate you, not the person sitting next to you, not the person across the room, not somebody who you, you know, want to be here, but they're not here. This is for you, because it's so easy to like, focus on how other people aren't faithful. But that's not the point of scripture. Scripture speaks to us. So what does a faithful life, life look like? And uh, just apply them to yourself and see how faithful you are. So a faithful life, first of all, speaks the truth. Speaks the truth. Um, you know, Moses in the 10 Commandments said, you shall not bear false witness. The Apostle Paul challenged us in Ephesians to speak the truth in love. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. He said, don't qualify everything, just be simple, direct, and truthful. You see, a faithful person speaks the truth in love and doesn't need a lawyer to you know, navigate what they said. A faithful person doesn't travel in duplicity or innuendo or assumption. They clarify and they communicate. Um, and a faithful person knows the difference too between thus saith the Lord and their opinion. You ever run afoul of that? See, as a, as a preacher, that's the constant temptation. Can I just tell you guys that? Now, look, here's the thing. Uh, you need 
to do what Jesus says. You do not need to agree with Chad. Yeah, I'm just telling you right now, you need to agree with Jesus because he's the king of kings and lord of lords. But if my opinion gets inserted in this, I'm gonna either tell you it's my opinion or you just need to go ahead and ignore it and go, that's your opinion. Because my opinion's not important. I always tell people, if you wanna know my opinion, you can take me to lunch, we can talk. But, um, but the reality is, we need to agree with Jesus. And we need to know that, hey, this is what Jesus said versus this is what I think. And, and a faithful person knows that because they speak the truth. So let me just ask, are your words true? Are they reliable? Are they trustworthy? Is your yes, does it actually mean yes? Does your no actually mean no? Or are your words slanderous? Are they gossip? Are they accusations? Are they lies? Because we want our words to be kind. We want them to be encouraging. We want our words to point to Jesus. And I'm just gonna tell you, if you want your words to be true, immerse yourself in God's word because this is where we learn truth. You know, Jesus said, if you remain in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth. And guess what the truth will do? Yeah, it will set you free, but you actually have to know the words of Jesus to do that. But here's the thing, if you know Jesus' words, get, there's more truth is gonna come out of your mouth. Uh, a faithful life speaks the truth. And then a faithful life lives out conviction. Lives out conviction. Colossians chapter three, the apostle Paul says, whatever you do, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So every action, every word, everything we do is supposed to represent Jesus. Here we go back to that whole character thing. Can't represent Jesus unless you reflect his character. Everything we say and do is supposed to be a reflection of Jesus in our lives. Um, so do you ever say one thing and do another? <laughs> Nobody wants to confess now. See, do you, do you ever uh, say one thing and do another with your friends? Do you ever say one thing and do another with your spouse? Oh, wait, here's where we're most guilty. Do you ever say one thing and do another with your children? Yeah, you know, do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. You see, if we do, then that is character inconsistency, which is a nice way of saying, if you don't practice what you preach, you're a, uh, yeah, we're hypocrites. Now, all of us are, you know, managed to be hypocrites at some point or another because, you know, we don't practice what we preach. You know, it's, it's like the person who's telling you what you should or shouldn't eat and you catch them, you know, stuffing cotton candy in their mouth or something like that, which is always a lot of fun if you catch people doing that. Uh, but if your actions don't match your words, and, and I'm not talking about the occasional slip up and I'm not talking about the incidental things. If you are consistently, your actions and your words don't match, can I just encourage you to change your actions or change your convictions? In other words, follow Jesus or drop the label. Don't make Jesus look bad because that's what uh, hypocrisy does. And again, we're all faithless to a point. We're all sinners, which is why we celebrate God's grace. And God does not expect perfection from his children, but he does expect improvement. He doesn't expect you to be perfect. He does expect us to make progress. And, and, and that begs the question, are you trying to make progress? Are you working at that character consistency piece? Are you living out your conviction? You know, and, and the way, when I say, are you trying, are you reading the Bible? Look, it's God's word. Again, we're not gonna be able to represent him if we don't know what he says to do with our lives. Are, are you trying to apply scripture to your life? Are you in a life group? Some of you are like, well, it's summertime. I can't be in a life group. Oh yeah, guess what? It starts Tuesday night, you know, in Havasu and Wednesday night in Parker, summer life. And we're doing it at both campuses. We're doing both locations, both communities. And so if you haven't been in a life group and you're going, I should get in a life group, then go out and sign up for summer life, you know, at the end of this service. In Parker, hey, I'm gonna be down there Wednesday and I would love to see you guys in Parker, you know, there for summer life because uh, I don't wanna drive down there and no one show up. But uh, no, I'd love to, I, like, I wanna share with you, we're gonna be talking about who God is and what he does and, 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 it's, and it's awesome. So come check it out and find out what you know, God has for you and how, what it, find out what life groups are about. Because look, I'm just gonna tell you, life groups are awesome. 
And I'm just sharing that because I'm in a life group. I've been in a life group since we launched them. And, and you know, look, life groups make a difference in your life. So uh, there, that's my, that's my sales pitch. So if you're here, sign up. If you're in Parker, sign up. And we'll see you this week because I'm, I'm leading it off. Uh, so in a life group, you know, maybe you need to go to Celebrate Recovery. It, you know, Monday nights, 6.30, Sweetwater. We're going to launch in Parker, you know, in 2025. I mean, it's, it, it's something that, that is gonna, it's life-changing, makes a difference. Or you're like, oh, I can't do that. Go to counseling. What are you doing to try to make improvement? See, I just want us to know that Jesus' harshest words in the Gospels were directed at religious people who are practicing hypocrites. I mean, they were the religious elite and, and Jesus called them out. And so they were people who claimed to represent God but didn't live out their convictions. A faithful life is one that lives out their convictions. And a faithful life is one that serves God. Serves God. We are servants of God. Uh, if we're servants of God, what does God expect us to do? Serve. <laughs> Some of you are like, that's a trick question, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Right now we're going to have, you know, ushers run up and down the aisles signing you up to serve. Now, I mean, if we're going to serve God, if we're going to be faithful serving God, well, then we have to serve. I mean, that's just part of it. And there's two things that faithful servants do. I, okay, there's probably more than two, but I'm going to mention two things. The first one is they love and lead their family well. Okay, family is our first ministry responsibility and faithfulness if it's going to be lived out, needs to be lived out at home. Okay, again, all these characteristics need to start in the home. That's your first place of responsibility. That's the first place that God puts you in charge of. And, and, and so live it out at home, which means if you're married, you live out your wedding vows, which means there's no cheating, no adultery, no faithlessness in your relationships. And that's physical and emotional. Okay, it means that you actively love, honor, and cherish your spouse. You guys remember you took those vows, right? You remember you looked at each other with goo-goo eyes, <laughs> held hands, gave rings, all that kind of stuff, and you said, I promise to, to love, honor, cherish, in sickness and in health, for better, for worse, richer, for poorer. You didn't know how much worse it was gonna get. You didn't know it was going to be for poor. You didn't know all that. But, but you made the commitment, and this is about living out the commitment. And it means that you actively love and lead your children to Jesus. Love and lead your children to Jesus. Uh, as a parent, you're either leading your kids to Jesus or you actually are leading them away from God. And grandparents, you've got a responsibility to do what you can to love and lead them to Jesus as well. So, the first thing is you love and lead your family. If you're gonna be a faithful servant of God, that's a must. And that's where it starts. And again, I've, I've mentioned this before. If you're older and you blew that and the, your kids were younger, then um, it's never too late for, to ask God to reconcile, to heal, to apologize, to make amends, to do all those things that can restore relationship and give you more influence in their life now. So that's the first thing. Love and lead your family. The second thing that faithful servants do is influence effectively. Influence effectively. Uh, one of my favorite parables in the Gospels, Jesus tells us in Matthew 25, it's called the parable of the talents. And, and it goes like this. He's talking about the kingdom of heaven. He says the kingdom of heaven is like a, a man who goes on a journey and he gets his servants together and he entrusts them with talents. Talents is a measure of money. One talent equals uh, a year's wages or 20 years wages for a, a person. So it's a lot of money. Okay, one talent's a lot of money. And he says he had, to the first servant, he gave five talents, to the second one, two talents, to the, the third one, one talent. And then he left. And the first servant went and made five more talents. Second servant went and made two more talents. The third servant took his talent and buried it in the ground because he was afraid. Master comes back, calls his servants to account. First one says, Master, you gave me five talents. Here's five more talents. Master says, well done, good and faithful servant. Come and inherit, you know, you've been faithful with little, I'm going to put you in charge of much. Second servant comes and says, you gave me two talents, I made two more talents. Same response, the master says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with little, I'm going to put you in charge of much. Third servant comes in, he's got one talent. He says, master, you gave me one talent, and I was afraid because I knew you to be a harsh master. 
you know, you reap where you don't sow and all this other stuff. And so I hit it in the ground. Here's your talent back. And the master says this, you wicked, lazy servant. You could have at least put it with the bank and I would have gotten some interest on it. But because you were, um, you know, afraid and you did that and you knew I was harsh, then, you know, you should have, should have done better, should have thought more about that. So he said, take it away from him, give it to the guy with the 10 and toss this wicked, lazy servant out into the darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I share that with you because this is about uh, influence and being effective for the kingdom of God. Now, if you grew up in church, you may have been exposed to a faulty teaching about faithfulness like I was. And in, uh, in many of the dead churches that I've been in or visited or been coaching, faithfulness is often described as not sinning and showing up. It's just described as not sinning, so passive goodness, we talked about that last week, passive goodness and attending. And people are like, well, we don't do anything, we're not reaching anybody, but we're faithful. And, and I'm just like, I'm sorry, which one of the three servants does that actually sound like? So which one of the three servants does that actually sound like? Yeah, the third one, the wicked, lazy guy. And I'm like, this, this, you're, not, you're not using your influence to make a difference in this world for the kingdom. And I think Jesus said, faithfulness is seen in effectiveness. Faithfulness is influencing people for the kingdom. It is leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. That, that's part of our faithfulness. Faithfulness is using our gifts and abilities to bless and to serve people. That, that's all part of faithfulness as a servant of God. So let me ask you some questions. Who are you leading to a life-changing relationship with Jesus? Is there someone you're inviting to church? I don't care how many times they've turned you down. Don't give up. You know, don't harass them like every day, but you know, you know go ahead and on a regular basis, just go invite them again. One of these times they're gonna say yes just to shut you up at least, right? I mean, but you don't care. Give them a chance. Give God a chance to change their life. But who are, you, who are you actually recruiting to come and be a part of what God is doing in this place? And how are you contributing to the mission? You know, our mission is to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Are you contributing by volunteering? Are you contributing by tithing? Are you contributing by, you know, participating in Limitless, and a lot of you are, and praise God for that. And how are you using your gifts and abilities for Jesus? Because Jesus has blessed you and given those to you. Really what it comes down to is this. Do you think Jesus would declare your life faithful? Would you hear, well done, good and faithful servant? Because I want to hear that for me. And as your pastor, I want you to hear that. I want you to stand before Jesus and hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with little. I'm gonna put you in charge of much. You see, we want to be faithful. And the Spirit is leading us to faithfulness. Will we follow? Let's pray. Father, you are faithful and, and we know that we're not. We know that so many times we've been the wicked, lazy servant We've been the person who hasn't lived out our convictions. God, we, you know our words, and, and where words are many, sin is not absent, and we're guilty. So God, we ask for grace and mercy. We ask that you'd meet us today and just visit uh, your redemption in our lives because we want to be faithful servants. We want you to, to demonstrate your goodness in our lives, your grace in our lives. We want to lead our friends and family to that life-changing relationship with Jesus. So God, we ask that you do a work in us. We yield to the Holy Spirit and invite him to teach us because we can trust you. You are always working for good in our lives. So Father, thanks for loving us. Thank you for saving us and thank you for calling us to be more and more like Jesus. We want to follow you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. God is faithful. His word is true, his character is consistent, and he's working in our lives for redemption. Praise God. I want to thank you for listening to our message today and invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel by visiting youtube.com forward slash 
Calvary LHC and hitting the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified whenever we have new content and you'll receive our daily devotionals known as Your Word for the Day. You can also sign up on our homepage at calvaryaz.com. Well, that's all for today. Please come back next week where we'll be hearing about gentleness. Bye-bye.